ரஸ்வீதன ஜீவிதே kidney diseases have plagued the villages of madukare for many years for 335 families that once relied on impure water there's some hope a water purification project by gammatta gammatta for the people by the people news first news line with faraz shaukat ali and a very good evening to you and welcome to uh, newsline by zoom uh, and joining us um, uh, by zoom this uh, evening is uh, professor shanta devarajan uh, who's a uh, um, former governor of the cent uh, of uh, sorry not not of the central bank who is a former world bank chief economist and uh, is a professor of the practice of development at georgetown university and uh, professor devarajan is also uh, advising Uh, as had discussions with the president of sri lanka uh, in terms of uh, sri lanka's engagement with the imf um, uh, perhaps when we discuss this with him uh, the professor will let us know uh, what real options are there for our country during this particularly um, challenging period in our economy uh, very good evening and thank you for joining us uh, professor uh, devrajan it's a pleasure to be here i'm a I'm a great admirer of your show so I'm honored to be invited on it. Uh, thank you very much. It's most kind. Um, um <clears throat> Professor, you've been having uh, discussions with uh, the president of our country and uh, I'd like to ask you uh, how will the IMF be able to help Sri Lanka? Okay. Well, it's not the IMF, it's how Sri Lanka will be able to help the country um most of my discussions actually have been with the governor of the central bank the secretary of the treasury and of uh, the prime minister and and president as well uh and in addition with the imf and there's no question that sri lanka is in a extremely dire situation right now basically the country has run out of foreign exchange and so it's unable to pay for fuel imports or gas imports uh food and fertilizer and what we're seeing are these extreme shortages um uh, throughout the country and basically uh, a lack of uh, fuel for transport and and other other things what the imf program is able to do will will be able to do if assuming it's it's uh, successful would be to provide a a a, a fiscal adjustment to the country so that it can actually and that is certified by the IMF and then we can begin to uh, embark on a debt restructure so that then that will bring in foreign exchange into the country not only from uh, the IMF itself up to about 800 million dollars but that would then release funds from the world bank and the asian development bank of the order of 1 billion dollars each that will help to relieve this foreign ex- acute foreign exchange shortage uh the, the 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 key is for sri lanka to get on a path so that it can actually start getting access to capital markets again and be able to bring in foreign exchange that they can then start using for investment and also these essential imports the um, thank you uh, professor shanta devarajan who is joining newsline by zoom so you may experience a slight delay uh, in in hearing the voice um then uh, professor in a country like sri lanka uh, that has no foreign exchange how do we service the foreign exchange uh, the the foreign exchange loans that we've got now that's the point we've stopped servicing them we've declared a debt standstill back in april so that we right now we're not servicing them because in fact we cannot pay them back at the rates that they are currently being uh, being demanded so in order to be able to pay back those debts we need to negotiate a restructuring of those debts with the creditors 
That's with the, both the private creditors, the, the, the people who own the uh, international sovereign bonds, as well as the official creditors, including China, India, Japan, and so on. And we negotiate it in such a way that the amount that Sri Lanka has to pay back is less than what it currently has to pay back. That's what a debt restructuring does. But that's where the IMF program is important because in order to be able to negotiate that reduction in the debt service payments, you have to show that you have a credible fiscal adjustment program in the country, that the country has, is on a, on a path to reducing the fiscal deficit, which has exploded to 11% of GDP now, um, as, as well as undertake the monetary policies that will lead to a prudent monetary and fiscal policy that will then service the new level of debt that would have been restructured. For, for all this to happen, um, Professor uh, Devarajan, um, does Sri Lanka have a um, proper cash flow? Do they have a it, cash flow? Right now, they don't. Uh, right now, the situation is, ex that's why we're seeing these shortages. The situation is extremely serious. So in the period while we're negotiating the debt restructuring and the IMF program, Sri Lanka needs what's called bridge financing. And they have received some, they've received up to, I think, three and a half or four billion dollars from India, but they haven't received much from anybody else. Uh, so they need that. That's the cash flow that you that you uh, or what you describe as cash flow in order to buy the essential imports, the oil, the fuel, the fertilizer, the, the, the food uh, and, and so on. So we're hoping and that's why there was so much emphasis on reaching a staff level agreement with the IMF. That's before the IMF program is approved by the board. There can be an agreement between the staff the staff of the IMF and the staff of, the, of, of Sri Lanka, which is the Central Bank and Ministry of Finance. If you reach that staff level agreement, some other friendly nations have said they might be willing to provide bridge financing. Uh, so that's absolutely critical for over the next two to three months uh, 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 in, in order to pro provide the cash flow. And um, uh, we're today, uh... Newsline Zoom um, is uh, uh, our guest uh, joining us from the United States is uh, Professor Shanta Devarajan. Um, and uh, can I ask you, uh, Professor, uh, has, is there any country in the world that uh, the IMF have helped uh, without a cash flow? Oh, yeah, L lots of countries have been in this situation. Uh, uh, the, just more quite recently, uh, Argentina, Ecuador, uh, and, and a few other countries have been in the situation where they've had to declare a debt standstill, which means that they have no foreign exchange uh, coming in. And so then they negotiate a program of fiscal adjustment and a debt restructuring uh, that then opens up the possibility of getting cash flow, including the lower debt uh, uh, debt payments. So, and th this is where the IMF helps because the IMF certifies that fiscal program so that the, the creditors are willing to take a, a haircut. Um, and this, the, I said, the, the recent examples include Argentina and, and Ecuador and Suriname um, and, and a few others. Some, some are being negotiated as we speak, like Zambia and, and so on. So this is, this is, I mean, it's not, the standard thing that the IMF does, but it's, it has happened in the past um, uh, in, in many cases. It, it's never been the case in Sri Lanka, so it's, it's unique for Sri Lanka's history, but uh, it, it is something that they've done in other countries. Now, I, I suppose uh, in keeping in uh, sort of in, in line with the requirements uh, of the IMF, uh, the, the rupee uh, has, uh, it used to be, uh, 203 to the dollar, it's uh, 365 today, um, near enough. And um, now, of course, the people virtually can't afford to eat. Um, I am actually uh, totally frustrated uh, on behalf of my fellow uh, uh, citizens, if you like, 
uh, because the queues have got longer and longer. Uh, we, we used to have uh, a normal queue. Well, now it's abnormal. In this, the queues are abnormal anyway. But now it's abnormal because it's now three deep. You have three, car, three deep cars. Then you have another one for the Tooks and another couple of them for the uh, bikes and so on. Uh, and so, you know, it's getting to the stage where people can't eat. Um, the prices have gone straight through the roof. Clearly, uh, with the dollar uh, crisis, you know, we, it was 200 before, it's now 365. And on the curbside rate, it's probably coming close to 400. So uh, will the IMF be able to help the people of Sri Lanka to, to eat? Good question. Let, let, let me first clarify a few things. Right. The allowing the exchange rate to depreciate, which is what Sri Lanka did from going from 200 to 365, is not, a, is not the IMF requirement. That is a Sri Lankan requirement. They needed that because there was no foreign exchange coming in at that overvalued exchange rate. That's the problem. If you hold the exchange rate at, at 200 rupees, people weren't sending remittances. You notice that Sri Lanka is the only country in South Asia where remittances actually went down in 2021, right? So this was a, a colossal mistake by the Sri Lankan government to hold the exchange rate at 200. So what they did by letting it flow to 365 uh, is actually the right thing to do to bring in the foreign exchange. Now, that said, there's no question there's very high inflation in the country. The reason for that is not the devaluation of the, of the rupee, but the fact that the government financed the fiscal deficit over the last two years by printing money. They followed a policy of just financing the deficit by borrowing from the central bank, which amounts to printing money. So the money supply over the last two years, the money supply in Sri Lanka went up by 40% when growth was practically zero over those two years. So you've got a lot of money supply in the economy. And as the textbooks will tell you, when you do that, you get high inflation. That's why we have 50% inflation. So there's no question that this, this is a colossal mismanagement of the economy that got us into this place. Not IMF pressure or anything like that, right? And it's not, I think, COVID and the Ukraine war only exacerbated the situation. These were the big mistakes. Now, what, what an IMF program or the program that we're, we're, we're discussing, what Sri Lanka is proposing, are a set of policies to reverse these mistakes. So for instance, they're increasing taxes as a way of, of, of reducing the fiscal deficit. See, the, the thing to keep in mind is that Every time you do something that increases the fiscal deficit, like increasing a subsidy or cutting taxes, you actually hurt people by creating inflation. So this is all of this is aimed at bringing down the rate of inflation and the IMF can help by actually helping promote these policies that will bring down inflation in the country so that people can eat, but also open up the possibility of foreign exchange, which is the other thing that is preventing people from eating. I mean, one reason people can't eat now is that say the tuk-tuk drivers aren't earning any money because there's no fuel. So they can't feed their families. This is a tragedy that is going on now. Indeed. Um, thank you, Professor Shantadev Rajan. Let's go for a short break. Um, we're getting some messages that uh, uh, live viewers are on TV One are experiencing some difficulties. We're going to have a look at that during the break. We'll see you on the other side after also listening to the headline news. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. President visits Parliament.
14th life lost at a fuel queue. A response to the Prime Minister. An action plan from the people's struggle. Minister Harin's fuel ships. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukut Ali. And uh, welcome back to Newsline Zoom. Uh, we are having some technical difficulties uh, on the uh, dialogue um, broadcasting side of things, um, which uh, our engineering are looking at. But in the meantime, we are um, live uh, by Zoom with Dr. Uh, with, sorry, with Professor uh, Shanta Devarajan. Um, uh, who is joining us uh, by Zoom uh, from the United States. Uh, Professor, tell me, so, so you've explained about that, but can the IMF help the people to eat in, the, in a sense? Uh, I don't quite literally mean that, but does the IMF, can they lend money for Sri Lanka's consumption? The IMF? lends money to the central bank in foreign exchange. That's if, if, if there is an IMF program, this, this program that we're negotiating, assuming it's, it's approved by the board, then that is, it is able to provide foreign exchange. And we know that it's foreign exchange that we need in order for people to eat. People are, are unable to eat now because this is acute shortage of foreign exchange, both on the side of, of food itself but also the, the implements you need to, to cook food and to, uh, to, to buy food, like tr fuel, transport, so you can go to the shop to buy things. And the point I made earlier, which is the fuel is a source of income for so many people, taxi drivers, tuk-tuk drivers, and so on. And now they're unable to earn a, a living. Uh, uh, so these are, the, the foreign exchange constraint is what is really hurting all of the Sri Lankan people, including people who may never actually buy imports. It's hurting their livelihoods. And uh, so, uh, Professor, uh, now clearly Sri Lanka does not have a, a, a sort of a cash flow or doesn't have a plan. So how on earth, uh, what will happen to our debt sustainability? And what about uh, this the, the purchase of all our essentials. Are we going, if without this plan, are we facing maybe two or three years of terrible hardship, uh, like ad hoc purchases of fuel and whenever they can, you know, a passing spot purchase or something like that, which is simply no good to, for the economy of our country and also uh, places huge challenges on the people of our country? First of all, I would disagree that they don't have a plan. There is a plan. This is this is what we've been working on for the last I don't know six months now, uh, which is a program of debt restructuring and a fiscal adjustment that would then lead to an IMF program. Uh, that those those two components are part of the plan. There's no question about that. Indeed, in addition, I would say, again, since January, we have been uh, discussing with various partners, friendly nations, the possibility of bridge financing during this intermediate time. That is what has led to the bridge financing that was pro has been provided by the Indian government uh, of the order of $4 billion. We've been having discussions with the Japanese. We've been having discussions with the Chinese for bridge financing during this period. So this is not a, th there is a plan. 
it doesn't always work as we know with all plants there are hiccups along the way but we are trying to do that now what your other question is are we looking at three four years of this well that really depends on the debt restructuring i think if and, and this is again based on experience in other countries if sri lanka is successful in uh, getting an imf program approved say in three months um and then three months after that, there's, there's a substantial debt restructuring, then it is possible for enough foreign exchange to be coming in rather than flowing out uh, for Sri Lanka to be able to have a normal level of imports of fuel and food and fertilizer and the things that are needed for the normal uh, structuring. And then about the experience is that about six months or nine months after that, the country can actually get access to capital markets again. It can re, re, regain access to international capital markets. And then you can start borrowing for investment. And but, that will let, put a country back on a, a, a growth path. Um, but at the moment, uh, Professor, right now, we don't have the hard currency. We don't have the money to buy pet uh, petrol, for example. So how, how can we even dream or, or yes, dream, I suppose, is the best word, uh, of uh, um, you know, repaying our loans or uh, servicing our loans. If you see the queues out there, they're just terrible. And it's, yeah, come, absolutely. To the, it's come to the point where it is deeply, deeply upsetting to see uh, people standing for hours on end in the scorching heat, in the rains as well, and uh, yesterday in, uh, in driving winds. And at the end of the day, they, uh, after doing all that, they don't have enough money to buy their bare essentials. So without money for petrol, how are we going to pay our loans or anything like that? Well, that that's the point I mentioned earlier. You, you're not paying your loans. You, we are not paying any loans at the moment because we want to use whatever foreign exchange we have for petrol. But we have because none. that's the emergency. But right? we have no money. Well, th that's that. But that's what we're trying to get in terms of bridge financing. We have we have received some bridge financing from the Indians, and if we can reach a staff level agreement with the IMF, which I think it's, it's we're close, I think we will get bridge financing from the Japanese and uh, possibly other friendly nations. That will then enable us to buy the fuel, buy the petrol, just to get through the next three months, just just be, just to buy the essentials. This is not luxury living, it, but it is to reduce the queues. As you said, it, 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 it's 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 inhumane what's uh, what's happening to these people, uh, 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 ha having to stand in, in line. And I'm I'm seeing the you know the this woman who jumped into the lake with her two children because she couldn't feed them. I mean, it is it is painful. To, to watch this. So our top priority has to be, let's get the foreign exchange to buy fuel. But in, uh, I hear what you say, and you know, I don't see any of the uh, international humanitarian agencies helping out. We, we see, or, or maybe they've helped very, very little. Uh, so, so little that it's uh, really insignificant when you look at the overall picture. You need to be here to see it, and then, we have this other, other situation where, uh, you know, the, the, the government is saying, they keep saying things, but there is a lack of delivery. Now, you, you mentioned Japan, but apparently the Japanese don't want to give us any money. They, they're citing a sort of a confidence deficit. How important is this confidence deficit? Uh, I don't know. Oh, and I, I think that... that uh... The, the statement by the Japanese has now been uh, retracted, right, or, or contradicted, saying they never said that about the confidence deficit. I don't. I, I just saw, I saw something in the press that somebody had quoted the Japanese ambassador as having said something, and then the Japanese embassy said, "No, he never said that." Right. So I, anyway, leaving that aside, I, th th there is a problem, uh, and I don't know whether you want to call it a confidence deficit. The the the, the question is. Is Sri Lanka on a path towards debt restructuring? Because you see, if if countries give bridge financing today, and then the whole macroeconomic program blows up, then that would have been just money down the drain. 
So, so the Japanese quite yeah. sensibly want to see some credibility in the in the program. And that's what the staff level agreement will give you. Professor, um, uh, Professor. now th there's another point. Uh, lots of questions from our viewers uh, asking when, when, when. I suppose it means when is the IMF going to uh, come up with the, uh, with the DOSH, basically. But there's another question. Now, now they're saying that the, uh, the, the central bank needs to be independent. Uh, so that they won't be able to print rupees. But if that happens, the government will not be able to print rupees to pay the huge number of civil servants, uh, the government servants, uh, who have to be paid. Does this mean that we can see a reduction, drastic reduction in the numbers uh, of or the, the amounts paid to the civil servants? No, it means, it means that you're fooling yourself by thinking that by printing money, by borrowing from the central bank to pay civil servants, the government is helping the civil servants because all this does is create inflation and that in inflation will erode their salaries. There's no point in paying them 5,000 rupees more if they're losing 5,000 rupees in terms of inflation. They can't buy things with that when the prices go up. So the whole point of having an independent central bank is that you never get yourself into this, this pickle which is you, you, you get into a, a program where you finance the fiscal deficit by, by borrowing from the central bank, that prints more money, that creates inflation, and which means that then you have to buy, as you were suggesting, you need to borrow some more money to pay the civil servants. That creates even more inflation, and you're in a spiral that, that is out of control. That's why you need an independent central bank. It's absolutely essential. This has nothing to do with competence of the governor or, 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 or lack thereof. It has to do with the institution. So when the pressure comes from the, fiscal, from the finance ministry to finance the fiscal deficit, the central bank governor can say, no, this is not permitted by the law. I, there's a regulation that says the central bank will not finance a fiscal deficit, period. Uh, that's how successful countries have done in keeping inflation under control. Uh, Sri Lanka is chronically a high inflation country. You know, the average rate of inflation in Sri Lanka for decades has been double the South Asian average. Uh, so th th there's something wrong here. Uh, and that is, I think, the fact that the central, the, the, the finance ministry basically has been dominating the central bank historically. And we need to stop that. And uh, uh, Professor, just uh, with a couple of minutes left to, uh, left here, uh, many questions about, uh, about the civil service and, and the payments to them, uh, because uh, obviously uh, they have to be paid. And if the government has no uh, other way of doing it, and everything is sort of down, revenue is down, uh, there is hardly any tourist dollars here and so on. So the 50 percent salary cut to to the public service is that something on the horizon if it goes on no I, I i no i don't think so no first of all there are ways of paying civil servants which is by for government to borrow from the private sector the, the, uh, using t-bills and so on right so the government can raise money if it wants to pay uh, pay this uh, civil servants uh and I'll get to whether that's a, you know, what, the, the civil service in a minute. But the important thing there is that that means that you have to raise interest rates in order to, 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 uh, to, to get them to be able to sell the uh, T-bills. Uh, and uh, that, that part of it will have some consequences. This is, uh, there's no free lunch in this, right? You can't just automatically pay the civil servants. You're in a very tight situation. But I would say you, 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 you choose the least damaging way of raising those funds. Thank you now, very, coming back to the civil thank, service. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shantadev oh, Rajan. It's now time for the primetime news from News First, uh, the primetime news team at News First. Thank you. We're sorry about the technical glitches on, uh, uh, on the dialogue side of uh, transmission, and uh, we're looking at that. Thank you, and it's now time for the primetime news. Take care, and God bless you. COVID-19 संधा आरक्षित पी